Bible, as for the saints in the land, they are the excellence in whom all my delight resides. Now, in verse 3, if this is David speaking, then he is speaking of the people who are in the land, the holy people who are in the land. Um, uh, they they are my delight. He delights in the in the godly people of the land. All right, this would have to have something to do with Israel, right? Maybe, possibly. All right, verse four. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another god. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. All right. That's from the King James. Now let's read verse 4 and other ones. Those who run after other gods will suffer more and more. I will not pour out um, li 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 libations of blood to such gods or take up their names on my lips. Trouble multiply for those who chase after other gods. I will not take part in their sacrifices of blood or even speak the names of their gods. The sorrows of those who run after another god shall multiply their drink offerings of blood. I will not pour out or take their names on my lips. Stop right here. Once again, David is speaking. This is this is David sharing his heart to God. He is he is talked. Uh, he has cried out to God to preserve him. He he's uh, he understands that there's no goodness apart from the Lord. He talks. Uh, David speaks about how the godly people in the land, you know, are his delight. But then he uh, acknowledges that those who run after false gods nothing but trouble, and that David is not going to offer any sacrifice or, or, or pour out their libations, or as the King James says, he's not going to, uh, he's not going to, uh, their drink offerings, he's not going to offer, okay? And I'm not going to speak uh, the names of their gods. David is, this is David speaking, I'm not going to be involved in their idolatry. The, the, the godly people in the land, they're my delight, but the ungodly, nothing but sorrow, and I'm not going to participate. All right, this, this is a very personal, David-focused type thing that is happening here. Verse 5. Please note, I'm going to read it from the King James. The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. Now, the King James uses the word my. This is David speaking of himself. This is David speaking of himself. Please note how the Blue Letter Bible people handled, handled it. Discover our identity, provision, protection that is bestowed upon us by our Lord in Psalm 16, 5. They, they take it from my, David speaking of himself, and just say, no, this is ours. Now, why did they do that? Well, I don't know. Let's look at this in uh, uh, every translation I have available here. I'm not going to read every single one, but I've got a lot of them here. New, I'm going to read all of these. New uh, International Version. Lord, you alone are my portion, my cup, and you make my lot secure. New Living Translation. Lord, you alone are my inheritance, my cup of blessing. You guard all that is mine. ESV, the Lord is my chosen portion and my cup, you hold my lot. The Berean Study Bible, the Lord is my chosen portion, my cup, you have made my lot secure. New American Standard, the Lord is the portion of my inheritance and my cup, you support my lot. Uh, King James, the Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup, thou maintainest my lot. Every single translation that I am looking at, it's my, mine. It's referencing David speaking of himself. And then you go to the Blue Letter Bible and the, and the thing they sent out, this is ours. These three things are ours. And they're given to us by the Lord in Psalm 16, 5. Are you sure of that? Are you sure of that? So this is one of those passages that we have to stop and go, now, wait a minute. Is David, the Lord is, is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup and thou maintainest my lot. Because if you make this some like promise to everyone, all right, then we could argue, I, I think we could do it this way and pull up the blue letter Bible again. 
we could argue, um, the, the, the Lord is my, my inheritance. Okay, do I have a cross-reference that takes this promise that David is claiming for himself and removes it and uh, or, or adds it to other people? We make it find one. All right, um, so uh, you are my inheritance. You, uh, you are my cup of blessing. All right, that's how they, 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 they state it. All right, can we find that there, there is blessing in God? Yes, we need a cross-reference. But then they go on to say, you guard all that is mine. You guard all that is mine. Now, here's where we have to be careful. If I claim all three of these promises are given to us by the Lord in Psalm 16, 5, and then God is going to guard all that is mine, he's going to protect all that is mine. And then this is just a, a promise. And I just claim it and I just send this out to everyone. Hey, your identity, your provision, and your protection. It's given to you by God in Psalm 16, 5. Okay, well, has anything, how many Christians, right? I'll just speak for myself. God is going to protect all that is mine. Right here where I live in a very safe area of town, Oh, no real crime, no major issues here. Even here, my car has been broken into, I think since we've lived here three times, and things of mine inside those cars were taken and stolen and taken from me. Well, well, no, I mean, it's a promise, but it's not a, it's not a definite promise. I mean, God may protect it or he may not. Well, then is it a promise or is it not a promise? Now, what promises did God give to David that when, that would make sense in, in that, like, if we looked at the previous promises that God gave to David, would that make some sense in light of what he is saying in Psalm 16, 5? What, what cross references can we look at? Let me read it again. Psalm 16, 5. The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup that thou maintainest my lot. Blue Letter Bible people sends out something today saying, hey, this is yours. This is about you if you're a Christian. This is giving you your inher your identity. They call it identity. Okay, your identity, your provision, and, and, and your protection. And God gives it to you in Psalm 16.5. That is their claim. And I'm just looking at this going, well, wait a minute here. This is David speaking about himself. Now, could I possibly find some cross-references to extend some of these promises to me? Maybe I could, but where would I, where would I go? How would I do that? What would be the right way to do so? I'm, I'm just going to look carefully. Because again, the idea here is just to get us thinking about this. And I'm not trying to be dogmatic. I'm just having some problems here. I'm going to pull up some... Um, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to pull up some commentaries here. I've got the, uh, uh, I'm just going to go through a number of them. Uh, the portion. There is allusion here to the Levitical portion, Numbers 18.20. I am thy portion and thy inheritance. The poet whom we must imagine it, um, exo exiled from his actual inheritance in Canaan consoles more, he uh, consoles and more than consoles himself with the sublime thought that the better part cannot be taken away from him. Right. Um, that that's just that that's just interesting. Uh, for the figure of the cup, they say, see Psalm eleven six. It had already been a synonym for condition in life. Thou maintainest. The Hebrew word here is peculiar and causes grammatical difficulties. But the sense is clear. God God does not only dispose. Cast the lot of the man in, in covenant relation to him. He does that even for unbelievers, but holds it fast in his hand. All right, now that's very... Uh, so so even thou maintainest, again, the Blue Letter Bible people just come right out and said, uh, they just translated it guard, and they said all that is mine, and that that's protection. It seems that that commentary does a different thing with that phrase, thou maintainest. All right? Um, the pulp, the pulpit commentary. Well, I'll hear this. I'll just go to Matthew Henry, uh, Psalm 16, one through 11. The Psalm begins with expressions of devotion, which may be applied to Christ, 
but ends with such confidence of a resurrection as must... Uh, okay, the psalm begins with expressions of devotion, which may be applied to Christ, but ends with such confidence of a resurrection as must be applied to Christ and to him only. Matthew Henry comes along and says, wait a minute, we got to apply this to Christ and to him only. Well, so is this, is this a psalm about Christ? Is this a psalm about David? Is this a psalm about you and me? And I pick up Psalm 16, 5 for my devotional time, and I'm like, man, look at the promises I am offered today in Psalm 16, 5. My, I have an identity, I have a provision, and I have um, protection. Whoo, great. And I'm just and, and, and I'm just gonna send this out to everyone, and everyone else is going to do the same thing with it. I I have some whole I have some major problems with well, how they handled Psalm 16.5. I have some major problems with it. I know I'm not I'm not giving you all the answers. I'm just I'm just offering some thoughts. I'm challenging it. I'm I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate here a little bit. So let's wrap it up this way, right? I'm going to read again from the Blue Letter Bible what they sent out. Discover our identity, provision, and protection that is bestowed upon us by our Lord in Psalm 16.5. Underneath that, they have a little, you know, poster. Lord, you alone are my inheritance. They say that's identity. My cup of blessing, provision, and you guard all that is mine, um, protection. They take the my, the mine, they, they, they remove that from its context and they expand that to all of us and then say, hey, this is ours. This is what I would challenge. This is what I would challenge. Um, and I'm going to go back to Psalm 16, 5 and the King James. The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance. Stop right there. All right. They have you alone are my inheritance. Okay. So let me ask you a question. Here's the first thing you need to do. Let's run some cross-references. Let's run some cross-references. Where can you find in the Bible where this idea of the Lord being our inheritance is expanded beyond just David and it's expanded to you and to me? All right. Now, if we can find it there, then this idea of our inheritance, our, our identity and tie, uh, 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 connected to inheritance would not be given to us by our Lord in Psalm 16.5. It would come from where we find it in a cross-reference to Psalm 16.5. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense to everyone. I'm not saying that the Lord is not our inheritance. I'm saying we need another passage to teach us that because I don't think Psalm 16.5 may, may not be teaching that. All right, so the Lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. All right, the Lord is my cup. All right, where, okay, what does the cup reference, right? Now, the, the, the New Living Translation replaces that cup of blessing, okay? Well, the Lord is my blessing, okay? Can I find cross-references that would, would, would tell, teach me that? If I can, if I can, then that's where I would learn it. I would not be learning it in Psalm 16, 5. And then the Lord um, is my protection or maintainest my lot. Now, they just say protection. I think maintainest my lot and cup requires a lot more work than, than they did and the thing they sent out. But whatever that maintainest my lot is, let's say it refers to protection Okay, what protection are we offered and how do we understand it in a, in a biblical context? Not to extend some promise to people that they don't experience in their life when someone hurts them, harms them, steals their property, or, or mis... Wait, what kind of protection are we promised and what kind of protection are we not promised? Let's make sure we maintain a biblical understanding and don't make the Bible say more than it does and let's not make it say less than it does. All right, I'll stop right there. That's Psalm 16, verse 5. 
Um, I just wanted to challenge this a little bit. I wanted us to just think about it today. If you do any work on Psalm 16.5, please, 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 please let me know what you find. If you think Psalm 16.5 should be translated, the Lord is our portion of our inheritance and of of our cup and thou maintain us our lot. If you think that this should be read in a way that, hey, you just read it and claim it as yours, then by all means, make your hermeneutical argument for it. I am making the hermeneutical argument.